Cubs 1-0 overall. But these folks have been chattering about this ever since he was hired. So it's number one Oklahoma in town to take on the Alabama Crimson Tide. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. Welcome to ESPN's College Football Saturday, celebrating 20 years of college football on ESPN. Tonight, the number one ranked Oklahoma Sooners take on the Alabama Crimson Tide. A capacity house tonight, and they have been standing for a goodly part of the pregame. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Mike Godfrey, and it is a special night because young Mike Shula has an opportunity to do something that even Baird never did, and that is face off against the number one team in this arena and he has a chance to come away with a win but that is a tall <laughs> order particularly with Oklahoma's defense Mike Ron one of the best defenses I've ever seen on tape they have eight defensive linemen led by Tommy Harris the All-American two great linebackers Lehman and Mitchell a great corner and Derek Strait so they have a good solid defense they're fast and they can run they've got strength what Alabama has to do is not get in third and long yardages against this defense where they'll get there and invite the blitz from Oklahoma so they got to stay out of that Bob Stoops in his fifth year Mike has already won a national championship hoping that possibly his Sooners might make it two in his first five years and Mike Shula making his first appearance here at this stadium as a head coach he of course has made many appearances here as his starting quarterback and we only mention the weather because right now it's very nice and it looks as though it's going to be mild but down at the bottom the forecast possibly isolated thunderstorms there are some in the area and we will keep an eye on that for you Oklahoma has won the toss they have deferred and it will be Alabama receiving as Trey DiCarlo prepares to kick it off Ramsey Robinson and Ray Hudson the two deep men Robinson on the near side Hudson on the far side 17 and 27 when you talk about anticipation and noise for a couple of days in this city these folks have been red and ready to see this one happen we are too here comes to Carla underway number one Oklahoma and the Crimson Tide of Alabama and Robinson will not return this one so let's take a look at the starters tonight Brody Coyle obviously will be the starter at quarterback a sophomore out of Rainbow City good touch in fact he can really zing the football and if there is a problem every once in a while he throws it a little too hot Mike Ron he didn't get off to a very good start against South Florida they said he was excited and he threw the ball too hard he cannot get off to that same start in this game well let's see if Oklahoma does come after him early they don't have to blitz a lot because that front four is so effective from the 20 play action wants to throw on first down zips this one intercepted by Oklahoma and picked off by Antonio Perkins Antonio Perkins is uh, Bob Stoop said the other day must might be the most talented secondary back they have and that includes Derek Strait with a great interception on the first play and not surprising that they went over on his side because Strait is the man that everybody tries to stay away from him and you, you see how good Perkins can be here come the Sooners Jason White at quarterback the three-year letterman a senior out of Tuttle Oklahoma Jones the lone setback and it's going to be a running play right at the middle Jones going to have five yards counted off at about seven and eight and let's take a look at the starters on offense for the Sooners works the tailback J.D. Runnels at fullback Clayton and Rankins the wide receivers the tight end is James Bubba Moses up front with the offensive line a little bit dinged up but Jamal Brown over on the right side all big 12 possibly the best of the group Messner Shoshan Bush and Joseph rounding out 
the other starters on the offensive line. Second down and short Sooners. Again from the shotgun. Here comes pressure. Good chop blocks at the line of scrimmage in and out of the hands of the intended receiver Brandon Jones. And it'll be a third down situation. The starters on defense for the Crimson Tide. Up front, Odom, Clark Bryant, and McKay Lozier. The linebackers, this is a solid group. Ryan's Roach and Derek Pope out of Galveston, Texas. And in the secondary, Anthony Madison and Charlie Pepper. Charlie Pepper with an interception last week. He is an outstanding player. Jones and Harper are the safeties. Here comes third down. The line to make is the 24, just inside the 24. With the shotgun, White rolls the pocket, now delivers the ball, is caught, and he's being pushed back. Now let's see where the spot is going to come. James Moses, the tight end, and you can see the spot is where he made the reception, and that will be plenty enough for the Oklahoma first down. Ron, I noticed right away Darren Joseph, the right guard, is not starting. Uh, Chris Bush, the backup, is starting in his place. Well, now, that means that Bush has moved over from center and probably Carter. And let's check that out. If Carter, yeah, number 50, has gone over to center. And there you see Bush. Chris is a sophomore out of Channel View, Texas. 6'4", 282 pounds. Draw play. Nothing doing this time. Hit in the backfield is Jones. Antoine Odom is there defensively to make the hit. Alabama held... Oklahoma to minus 23 yards rushing last year. All-time low for Oklahoma. They couldn't run on Alabama. Well, there you see the numbers, the lowest total in Oklahoma history. But just what you talked about, Mike, that they... Just what you talked about as you look at Joe Kimes, the defensive coordinator. They didn't want a mistake early. What they got to do now is, if nothing else, hold Oklahoma to three points. Short drop, quick throw, got it complete. And that's going to be Travis Wilson, the sophomore out of Carrollton, Texas. 6'3", 216. It is made by Ryans. Jamaica was sophomore out of Bessemer, just a few miles over to the east of Tuscaloosa. When we talked to Joe Kynes, a defensive coordinator, he said, I think Oklahoma's going to come out and chunk the football. Their wide receivers are very good. Their quarterback, Jason White, is a fifth-year senior, so why not throw the ball? Third down and five. For White, he's two or three for a total of ten yards. From the shotgun, pass in the middle, tipped and almost intercepted by Roach, the middle linebacker. And Freddie had an opportunity to return the favor that the Sooners came up with just a moment ago. A win for the Alabama defense. Freddie Roach had a chance to pick that Jason White throw off. Just went through his hands. DiCarlo, we get a chance to see him again. He was three of three last week. You see that ball tipped right there. Nice defensive play. Roach kind of kicking himself. This field goal attempt is going to be from 34 yards from the left hash mark. Good pass, plenty of distance, and he's got it. So the Carlo starts off 2003 tremendously well. Four of four, and the centers go on top, three to nothing. Well, the cheerleaders from Norman, very happy. Their team gets on the scoreboard first. And Mike Godfrey, as we prepare to kick off here, what does it do when you look at Brody Coyle? When you're intercepted on your very first pass of the night, is it something that really, uh, uh, you know, is it is it tough or can you get over quickly? Well, the average quarterback is, may send them the other way, but the good quarterbacks, they want to get back in and throw the ball again. I don't think your Brody's going to let that affect him when he comes back on the field. But we talked about he was nervous in the start last week against South Florida. Robinson and Hudson, the two deep men again. And this one here, a little confusion, going to be downed by Robinson. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you on the sideline. What do you got for us? Brody Coyle, from the player's perspective, if he has some butterflies, consider this now. Three head coaches in six months, the courage, the commitment it takes to go from the change in terminology and keep the commitment to the head coaches. He said, yeah, we were a little skeptical. We kept our heads up. Now, yes, we respect Oklahoma. We can't be intimidated by them. Now, here is my opportunity. Well, let's see what they do right here. Wouldn't surprise me if they come right back out and throw on first down. I think they got to find a way to run the football somehow against this Oklahoma defense. 
Rashad Williams, first carry of the night. They go straight at him. It's going to be a gain of maybe one. Teddy Lehman there with a hit. And here's the offense. Didn't get a chance to give you this because of the interception on the first play. Shad Williams, Tim Castile is the fullback. The wideouts, Triandos Luke and Zach Fletcher. Clint Johnston is the tight end. Up front with the offensive line, uh, Dennis Alexander graded out best last week. Uh, he is one of the, the team captains. Wesley Britt and Justin Smiley, they get a lot of attention from the media. Extremely good players. And we have a shaken up player uh, down on the field, Dante Nicholson, uh, the strong safety that uh, the coaching staff at Oklahoma has talked so much about. They look for big things from him. And in fact, Mike, they talked with him in terms of being their next Roy Williams, which is truly saying a lot. You know, Ron, when they said the, the other day that he has more range than Roy Williams at safety, uh, and that tells you a lot right there, that statement. Well, you see Matt McCoy standing there talking with defensive coordinator Mike Stoops. Uh, Matt is a senior out of Jinx, Oklahoma, and uh, he is the man who will come in replacing Dante Nicholson. When you look at this graphic, you understand what the problems offensively. Dennis Francione, two years. Mike Price came in with a spread offense. Mike Shula, a little bit more of a pro-style offense. And talking to Brody and uh, Shot Williams the other day, they said sometimes the plays kind of run together. But I want to say something. They were very high on Mike Price. They they really believed in Mike Price. And uh, they liked him a lot, and they, they have really grasped uh, Mike Shula's system right now. Well, we're glad to see Nicholson is up under his own power and uh, headed off the field. We'll keep an eye to see how long he stays on the sideline. But as we mentioned, Matt McCoy replaces him. Brandon Everidge, who did not start the ball game, is in at free safety. Number seven, a senior out of Granger, Texas. Cabin to tight end, flips. From the left over to the right, and a quick pass to Luke. And Luke, very short yardage, lost his footage, his uh, footing, and was hit by Jonathan Jackson, along with Brandon Everidge, the young man we were just talking about. Defensively for the Sooners, they will play eight up front, as Mike Godfrey talked about. But this is an excellent group, led by the All-American, Tommy Harris. And he won't just be at left tackle. He'll be at nose guard. They'll flip him over to the right. They don't want Alabama to draw a bead on him. Jackson Mitchell, Teddy Lehman, a 4-4 sprinter, is one of the linebackers. Perkins, who had the interception, Derek Strait, outstanding at the other corner. Here comes a blitz from the safety. Stepping up, Coy. He's hit. Ball is loose on the ground, and they scramble for it at the 15-yard line. Dan Cody is the man who made the hit. Oklahoma's now the referee saying Alabama recovered it. Jonathan Jackson was very close to making or causing the turnover with the recovery, and here you see the hit again. Fastest defense I've seen in a long time on tape. Remind you a lot of Miami's defenses when they were uh, wreaking havoc on all their opponents. So much speed and strength. Here's where I think the edge is to Oklahoma's two of the special teams. Bo Freeland standing back at the, the one yard line. Pressure coming up the middle. Wobbly spiraled. It will turn over. And Antonio Perkins is down to make the fair catch at the 47 yard line. So we'll take a timeout. Our score remains Oklahoma three to nothing. Nissan dealer. And by Mentos, now in a reclosable box with 70% more Mentos inside. Denny Chimes here on the campus at Alabama, one of the, the famous landmarks here in Tuscaloosa. In fact, we'll show you some more about the uh, Denny Chimes a little bit later on because since the late 40s, they have immortalized every captain. And of course, Mike Shula was a captain when he played here back in the 80s. First down and 10, Oklahoma with outstanding field position. This time with White under center, hands it off to the tailback. Jones comes to the left side across midfield, and he gets pounded down hard by number 35, Ryans. D'Amico, an outstanding guy that uh, his motor runs constantly. You know, Mike Shula spends a lot of time with the offense. Well, it was a co-captain in 1986, and this is at the base of the Denny Chimes, uh, and they also have their handprint and also uh, their, their cleat print, if you will, over talking with the offense and saying, hey, guys, we're fine, but 
you got to get something going here. Two series and uh, nothing to show for it yet. White looked to the right and back into the boundary. Has it complete 45-yard line to Jenkins. Oh, Rankin's a big pardon. The sophomore out of Windsor, North Carolina. And Reese Davis, let's uh, check with you. All righty, our situation is three to nothing. Oklahoma on top and just over nine minutes to play in his opening quarter. And we have had a stoppage in play for just a moment here. And uh, I was watching the report uh, and didn't look at the field. This is a Big 12 crew. We'll uh, we'll check with Adrian Carson and see what the discussion is. All right, so they're holding them up for for the measurement, and uh, a little surprised that it took a little bit this long uh, to uh, get that uh, chain gang in from the far sideline. But they're going to stretch it out and uh, see if Oklahoma did in fact pick up the first down just a moment ago. Nope, going to miss it by about three links of the chain. That may have been asked for by the coaches at Oklahoma because sometimes the referee will look over there and say you don't have it, and the coach will say I want to check it anyway. So the situation, third down and just inches. This crowd is just dying to have something to cheer about here. Offensively, they have not had anything so far. As you look into the eyes of the defense. Antoine Odom there, number 98. Here come the Sooners to the line of scrimmage with a two tight end alignment. I said. Straight ahead, he'll have the first down by a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Bob Stoops paces on the sideline as Derek Pope came up to make the tackle. All right, Mike, if you're Oklahoma right now, uh, you've got momentum in your favor. You have silenced the crowd. If you're Alabama, what do you come up with? Uh, do you, if you're Joe Kynes, you start crowding the line of scrimmage, forcing them to throw? They or? still have a tough time running. They better make sure they watch number nine here. Right here, he's in the slot right here. Clayton, because he's as good as it gets. Jones, four carries, 14 yards for him early. Pressure up the middle, pass over the hands of the receiver. Tried to go to Mark Clayton. Charles Jones right on top of him. I think Charles Jones got a hand on it, tipped that ball a little bit, but it was uh, not the best pass that uh, Jason White has uh, thrown tonight. Now, Mark Clayton has eight career touchdown reception, and he has great speed. 5'11", 187 pound receiver. Yeah, Jones was the reason that pass was not caught. You can see he got just enough of a hand on it. Second down and 10. 8.28 to play, opening quarter. Clayton in motion. Back to the short side of the field. Has five, has 10, it's Jones, and he's gonna be shoved out of bounds around the 30-yard line, and that is enough for still another Oklahoma first down. Officially, they're gonna see a gain of 14 on the play. Well, all of a sudden, you start throwing the football, and then you hit him on the draw, and Jones, is a power runner that's had 14 touchdowns in 2002 set an OU record last year well everybody talked about uh, the little guy last year about grip uh, but Jones he had almost 700 yards himself and he is an extremely durable and a good back but just simply did not get a lot of attention White steps up puts it into his stomach and they go with left guard it's going to be a short game this time defensively Jeremy Clark a redshirt freshman out of Daphne Alabama is there to make the tackle Ron when you look at Jason White the senior he's had all kind of injuries he's a fifth year senior but he's only started four games and only really played in 11 games so he's kind of young but Bobby Stoops says he's been in all the meetings he's been in all the practices he understands our offense. Second down and eight. You can see the line to make is just outside the 18. Again from the shotgun. They throw it complete and knocked out of bounds. 81 Brandon Jones. And Jones is a guy that, that the coaching staff is extremely high on. When they say he has all the tools that you need, and they think he's going to come on very strong. Roman Harper bumped him out of bounds. Alabama's secondary giving just enough cushion that that route seems to it's have open. been there and is going to be there all night if uh, they don't crowd them just a little bit more third down and four eighth play of the drive they want a timeout Oklahoma coach is trying to get some a timeout they've got it well, the guy was just talking about Brandon Jones 
uh, was late coming on the field, so they had to burn a timeout. We'll take it with them. 721 left opening quarter. Sooners by a field goal. So we're back three to nothing. We'll show you what happened on the sideline. Reserve fullback Sean Faria actually was the man who was supposed to have come on the field. You see the coaches, they said, well, we can't get him on in time. So the head coach says, let's just go ahead and call a timeout. And meanwhile, uh, Brandon Jones came trotting on the field to make sure the officials saw that they needed a timeout since he only had 10. That's how important every play is. We don't want to ruin a bad play. As Don Shula looks on. All-time winning is coach in the NFL. Third down. You can see they need it just inside the 18-yard line. White. Has the blitz, throws long, got a man, and over the outstretched hands of Mark Clayton. Looked over his left shoulder, then had to go back over his right shoulder. As Charlie Pepper had the cover, and you see quarterback Jason White slow in getting up. Derek Pope came on a blitz. Charlie Pepper had Mark Clayton man for man. Now, Pepper will go with Clayton a lot in this football game. Here's Jason White taking the hit from Pope. And he puts a pretty good pass out here to Clayton. Clayton just couldn't adjust to the football. Looked like he, as I said, trying to look over the left. He needed the right shoulder. 40-yard field goal attempt. DiCarlo made his first one tonight, made all three last week. Good pass, and here's his kick. Plenty of distance, but he's good. <laughs> so two for two tonight, and he has been the extent of the scoring for the Sooners. By the way, with that timeout that Oklahoma had to call a moment ago when they could not get the player on, they have only two timeouts left this first half. Reese Davis, let's go back to the studio. All righty. Well, some of the capacity crowd here at Bryant-Denny Stadium, and they're anxious to see the Crimson Tide offense get on track because of this very, very tough Oklahoma defense. They have not been able to do so in the early going to the ball game. Jason White on the headsets across the way. As you look at DiCarlo, well, he's got to be a man of total confidence. Uh, five of five to open this season. And two long kickoffs to start Alabama with bad field position. Hudson right there, Ray a Jr. out of Bonifay, Florida. And also Ramsey Robinson, the other deep man, standing to his right. And you can't say enough about Alabama's defense now. Two times they've been challenged. They've come up with stops and forced a field goal attempt. Here we see Charlie Pepper and company. Scott and also Jones on the sideline. The defensive players for the Crimson Tide talking it over. Here comes to Carlos kick. Again, very high into Moran, and this is almost going to sail out Same of the back of the end zone. So if you voted right now for the MVP in this ball game, it would be DiCarlo. Oklahoma, take a look at their defense. Oklahoma's defense real quick. They started off with an interception by Antonio Perkins, came back and got a sack, and then luckily for a Brody Coyle, the ball bounced back to him. So they, they're a big play defense. You must get some running yardage against them. Four snaps, minus four yards is what they have, Mike Godfrey. in the backfield now breaks it out has five has ten and Chad Williams finally going to be tackled up around the 35 yard line and that brought this crowd to their feet Dante Nicholson who is back in the ball game after his injury looked like Teddy Lehman had a shot at him in the backfield and just couldn't get to him let's see number 11 right there yep just had a shot at him and everybody kind of seemed to slow down a little bit Oklahoma, this is interesting, Mike has put in their entire backup defensive line. So the front four, the starters, have gone to the bench, and they are playing that second four. That's how much confidence this team has in their reserves. Shad Williams tries the right side again and is tripped up. May have even tripped over his guard's leg after a gain of about three. 
little counter play where you get down blocking by the offensive line gets them a chance to tee off a little bit on the defensive line of Oklahoma. You bring up a good point though while Tommy Harris is sitting over there resting a little bit. When you want to do that is when the team offensive team has the ball back within their own yardage inside their own 40. Verdine, Klein, Magruder, and Thibodeau, the backup four. Here's Sean Williams again, hit behind the line of scrimmage. Headgear goes flying. That's off Lance Mitchell. And Brandon Everidge comes up also to make the tackle. Everybody talks about Teddy Lehman. He's a great player. Lance Mitchell is very good also. Here's Etheridge also getting in there to make the hit. He might hop out those two linebackers. I mean, they get Mitchell and also Pasha Jackson. Both come out of the state of California from community or city college San of San Francisco. Francisco. Yeah. yeah. 24 and 0. Won two national championships. I wonder why. Five and a half minutes left to play. Opening quarter. Well, Corey Klein came across and made contact. Now we'll find out if he was drawn offside or if it is going to be a first down for Alabama by way of penalty on this third down. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, still third down. It's a smart move by Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator against Mike Shula's offense. You get a rested defensive line over there and you got your second defensive line in here right now. Gives you more plays out of this defense. Another third and long, which they can't get into and survive this Oklahoma defense. Of course, uh, Mike is the co-defensive coordinator. Brent Venables, the other co-defensive coordinator for the Sooners. From the shotgun, oh, the snap is too hard. Picked up by Oklahoma, now it's back on the ground. And I believe Alabama was able to recover it. Boy. Well, if you're an Alabama fan, you know last week the first half against South Florida was about the same. He was not ready for that snap. He didn't call for it, and the ball came back. They're very fortunate to recover this football. Because you could see coming through and trying to pick up the football, Oklahoma could have picked that up and could have scored a touchdown. Now, Brandon Shelby was the one who was coming through the gap after the fumble. Second punt by Alabama. The snap is dropped. He gets it away, and almost like an Australian rules football kick, he got a forward roll on it, and it's going to wind up inside the 45-yard line. Everything going wrong for Alabama. Still only behind six to nothing. 28 yards on the punt. And it goes without saying, you can't play like that against a number one team like Oklahoma because you wind up paying dearly. Low snap, but a good job of getting it off. Oklahoma's offense had great field position. They didn't like to get in the end zone. On the 43-yard line, Oklahoma Mike is exactly right. They've had nothing but good field position. That pass in the flat, in and out of the hands of Rajon Rankins. And, and again, that route is there. But that ball just simply dropped. Rankins is going to come out against Anthony Madison with a good cushion, as you mentioned, just drops a football. Both offenses not real sharp tonight. Jones on the sideline. Ronaldo works the senior out of Tulsa Booker T. Washington into the lineup. And they go straight ahead with the fullback. Actually Ronaldo works. I beg your pardon. And he is going to take it across the 45. Tackled by Derek Pope. And well, we're about to go under four minutes left to play in his opening quarter. Six to nothing Oklahoma on top. Ronaldo works had two big touchdown against Alabama last year in the fourth quarter rally on shovel draws. Well, it's third down. And the line to make for the Sooners, they need to take it to the 47-yard line of Alabama. Oklahoma, two of four on third down conversions. Blitz coming right up the middle. Jason White gets it out on the flat, and that's dropped by Wirtz. That was a difficult pass to catch, but still had his hands on it and could not. And now a standing ovation from this capacity house for the defense. 
Derek Pope is the man coming on the blitz. Blitz forced Jason White not to be able to set and throw this football through a low and behind Ronaldo Works. Jamal Brown might have been fortunate that he was not called for offensive holding, trying to protect his quarterback. And if you're Chuck Long, the offensive coordinator, Bobby Stoops, the head coach, right now you've got great field position, only have six points on the scoreboard. Blake Ferguson waits for the snap. Here's his boot with the win. Spiral's not going to turn over, but this is a tough one. He's going to catch it at the four-yard line. That's Triandos Luke. Wow. On ESPN and ABC Monday Night, catch all the action at 7.30 on ESPN. It's Monday Night Countdown, presented by UPS. Then at 9 on ABC, join Al Michaels and John Madden in the rematch of last year's NFC Championship game. Warren Sapp and the Bucks take on Donovan McNabb and the Eagles. Be a little warmer in that stadium, Philadelphia Eagles with great special teams. I think Triandos forgot where he was, but uh, he, he did. He got spinning around back there. Didn't you do his offense any favors. No, you don't take the ball inside the 10. From the four-yard line, play action, Coyle gets it out in the flat, has this one complete, and nearing the 10-yard line is Tim Castile. He's tackled by middle linebacker Lance Mitchell. And Tim Castile, freshman, came here as a tailback. He had fullback problems, moved him to fullback. He won't see tailback for a while. Well, that number one down four unit back in the lineup as you look at the average field position. That's, that's your story to ball game yeah. so far. If you're Alabama, it's uh, not good. If you're Oklahoma, you have to take advantage of it. Little counter play again. Shot Williams right at the middle. Wow, he gets blasted by Dante Nicholson, one of the first men to get there and make contact with him. And also Mitchell helping out on the stop. Mitchell may have to get that... Uh, Headgear tightened up a little bit. It's uh, been knocked off twice already tonight. See Dante Nicholson, you see him come in your screen number eight, the free safety, and make that play. Good there. tackle, good sure tackle. So they go from the 11. The line to make is just out across the 14 yard line, and Alabama 0 of 2 on third down conversions. Blitz coming across, and they get the pass complete to Luke. A triandos Luke with the first down. Teddy Lehman makes the stop, but there's their first conversion and a gain of eight yards. When you got a good defense like this that runs so well, sometimes you have to spread them out. And that's exactly what Alabama does on this offense. You got two receivers over here. You got a split receiver over here. So you're spreading out the defense a little bit more. Trying to salute to just a little hook pattern for the first down. Mike sweeps and plays like that are very difficult against a defense this Can't uh, fast. Can't do it. They, they run too fast. Yep. Counters, power plays, throw the football. It's Cabin in motion. Coyle throws it complete. Got the first down and a lot more. Triangle sloop. 19 yards, and that's the longest gainer of the night for the Crimson Tide as Brandon Everidge is there to make the tackle. Antonio Perkins defending against Trondos Luke. Misses out with an arm tackle. Everidge makes the stop. Alabama getting some things together now. Single back set again. They've had some success with this. And now a timeout with one minute and 39 seconds left to play in his opening quarter. And we'll take the break with him. Oklahoma six to nothing for the first time tonight. The Crimson Tide is driving. The uh, Alabama twirlers uh, enjoying things right now as the Crimson Tide has converted a very big third down situation. And Mike, you had an observation about the offensive set Alabama's gone to has been successful. Yeah, the one back set with three wide receivers and a tight end. Dave Rader kind of putting his hat on that right now. Now they come back in with the single back sets trying to spread out Oklahoma's bonded defense.
Oklahoma, by the way, now has only one timeout left for the first half. Shaw Williams right up the middle, runs into his own man, then he gets whacked hard from the secondary. And let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese, back here, six to nothing. Alabama driving. Shaw Williams, six carries, 28 yards so far. Williams again met at the line of scrimmage by middle linebacker Lance Mitchell and nothing doing Adrian Karsten back to the sideline. What do you have so much speed on Oklahoma Sooners defense their talent level and their desire is so high sometimes they can actually over pursue. That's why they took the timeout run to where you know the ball is going to be don't chase it but don't try to anticipate either. He can make mistakes and allow Alabama the first time. OK Adrian. You look at uh, Bob Stoops pacing the sideline across the way. It's third down, and the Crimson Tide needs about three yards. They need to take the football to the 47-yard line. In fact, just across the 47. Short drop, pressure's on, and he's sacked. Tommy Harris, the All-American, and the second time that they have gotten to Brody Croyle tonight. And how valuable is that, Mike Godfrey, when you can get that kind of pressure and not have to send the linebacker? Now, no back set. You know Brody Croy is not going to run the football. Harris was a starting defensive tackle since the fourth grade. Uh, who's going to tell him he's not a starter? <laughs> Well, that is the end of the first quarter, so let's take a timeout. Six to nothing. Oklahoma still leads. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa. Six to nothing. Oklahoma on top. And the second punt of the night by Alabama. Writings is the deep snapper. Now, the last snap was a little bit low, and they were fortunate to get it off. Bo Freeland standing back at the 25-yard line. Gets a good one this time, and Oklahoma with the return on. A booming high spiral. At the 16, Perkins in trouble, and Alabama showing they've got some speed as well. That is excellent coverage. 43 on the punt, and a minus one on the return. Clint Johnston, reserve tight end, is there to make the tackle. But tonight's game track being brought to you by Bridgestone. Pick on the very first play, and in the snap that came off Brody Coyle's face mask, and in the low pass, Freeland lucky to get that one away. And the Sooners have to settle for field goals. Now, this is their worst starting position of the night. Here's where Alabama's defense has to make something happen, give their offense good field position, or get a turnover right here. Running play straight ahead with Jones. He'll take it to the 20 and then is banged down. Derek Polk comes over defensively along with number 97, Anthony Bryant, to make the stop. Just thinking about Reese Davis there when he was showing the uh, Southern Cal score. You know Norm Chow wants to hang one on uh, BYU. He'd been there for a long time and now he's the offensive coordinator of Southern Cal. So he'd like nothing better than to get a big win there tonight. How many All-American quarterbacks has well, he had? He's he, coaching them. BYU and then the Rivers at NC State and then the Heisman Trophy winner last year. Second down and six from the shotgun. They fake the run. Pressure from the outside. White has to hurry and it is knocked away and incomplete. It'll be third down. Charles Jones is the man who got there to make the stop. Reese Davis. Let's check back. Bob is on their feet here in Tuscaloosa. It is third down. And the Sooners need about six, almost six and a half yards to pick up the first down. They need to take it out across the 27. Again from the shotgun. White retreats. Pressure gets it out there completely. Oh! What a hit caught by Clayton, and he got knocked down with a vicious hit there on the corner. Roman Harper with a great hit, Ron, and now Alabama's offense going to get that good field position, and that's what you need, a big hit to get this crowd back in this football game. Alabama's offense now should have good field position. And I'll tell you what, Mike, that might be what it takes, but the crowd is definitely back in it right now. Blake Ferguson waits for the snap at the 10-yard line. Sooners on top, six to nothing. Alabama trying to gain some momentum. High spiral to the turnover. 
And the catch is made by Triandos Luke, and he goes right down. Wow, good coverage by the Sooners. 44 on the kick and nothing on the return as Mark Bradley was there to make the tackle for OU. Quite a tackle by Mark Bradley. You're going to watch number one come right in your screen and uh, make a necktie. Brody Croyle and company coming right back on the field. They huddled on the sideline, and the offense is set to go. Kenneth Darby, number 34, a redshirt freshman out of Huntsville, comes in at tailback. Short drop, pumped it once, trying to go long. Contact on the outside, and the ball is caught, but he caught it out of bounds. Zach Fletcher was there, and I'll tell you, Zach really got cracked at the line of scrimmage on some bump and run by the corner. Did a good job. They leveled him as he made his up and out cut. Brody Crowell is going to do a good fake here, pump, and then uh, he sees that his receiver has been knocked off his route. Pretty good job right there by Derek Strait on Zach Fletcher. But the, the safety a little bit late in getting there. If that ball had been thrown on the field to play, it would have been complete. Fulgham in motion. Coyle trying to get out of harm's way, and he's just going to throw this one away. The pressure coming from Jonathan Jackson. Mike, this is one of the things that you can't duplicate in practice. You don't realize, or you don't have... <laughs> the team that you go up against in practice 11 guys who can run the way Oklahoma does and particularly no. off the edge no you don't see the same picture and when you get into the ball game right away you say hey they're faster than we thought but talking to Alabama's players they respected Oklahoma's defense they said Sean Williams and Bertie Carl both said they think they're better than they were last year Wow third down they need to take it out to the 42 from the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. Coyle dumps this one off and has it complete. Fulgham, and he's got to be tackled. I'm not so sure that maybe Brody should not have tucked the ball and run it in the middle because they had double coverage to the outside. Antonio Perkins makes the tackle. Alabama will have to punt it back. When you make a play against Oklahoma's defense, they close so well. Antonio Perkins right there to make the play. Every number seven, uh, right. Johnny on the spot. Well, the fourth punt by Freeland tonight. Perkins, the deep man. High kick off the side of his foot. Wobbly spiral to the far sideline. And he's going to pick it up in traffic. And it's going to be tackled immediately. Now, the beanbag went down, so obviously the ball came out for just a moment. 39 on the punt and one on the return. It'll be Oklahoma ball. We'll be right back. So we're back as you look into the Oklahoma offensive huddle. Jason White, the quarterback. And uh, Adrian just reported to us from the sideline. He came off the field after the last series and said, guys, we've got to do a better job. I'm getting a hit after every play. It's not basketball. You're <laughs> going to get hit in football. There's... The brace on the right knee, the ACL injury that he had most recently when he injured it last year against Oklahoma. I mean, against Alabama. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. Play action, very deep drop. Steps up. Throws it very long in the triple coverage, actually, by the secondary. Mark Clayton, the intended receiver. Here are the two injuries, and Mike, this is really, really amazing that there's no contact on either one. This is an 0-1 against Nebraska. Now he gets pressured. And so he makes a cut right there, and there you see him hobbling, and he goes down. That's the left knee. Last year, against the Crimson Tide, no one touches him, but you can see the little crisscross step. And all of a sudden, he goes down. That's the reason he wears the brace there. But he told us the other day on the phone, I'm surrounded by great players. I don't need to be a star, and I'm not worried about getting hit. Draw play. Jones. And Jones is going to be knocked down. Here comes one flag. Here comes the second. D'Amico Ryans is there defensively. <laughs> Jamal Brown, number 55. The tackle. Got caught for holding. 
See him coming around on Poland, and he's just got his hand on Jeremy Clark. Going back to Jason White. Ron, the second game, both injuries occurred. This is Oklahoma's second game, so I'm sure he's not thinking about that. Boy, I, I really enjoyed visiting with him the yeah, other day. Was great. The coaches say that he is absolutely the toughest kid on this football team. And they said that includes everybody. And he has been through a lot. Second down, and now they got a mountain to climb here. And this is the worst field position Oklahoma's had all night. So the fortunes have reversed. We'll see if Alabama can take advantage. Got to force a turnover because your offense is struggling. This crowd is up, standing, and making noise. Ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to go incomplete. And it was Antoine Odom, the junior, who tipped the ball at the line of scrimmage. 6'5", 277. Big play last week against South Florida on the reverse. Antoine Odom gets his hand up here. Pretty imposing defensive lineman, 6'5". OU, two of six on third down conversions. They have missed their last three. We see if Antoine Odom and company can put more pressure on the quarterback, Jason White. Here comes a blitz off the corner. They go with the running play. Jones right up the middle, and that's a smart call by Stoops. No sense in making an error and putting Alabama right back in the ball game as Bryant made the tackle. And no, he's got the offense uh, bottled up right yep. now. And don't make a mistake, but we've talked about Oklahoma's defense. We need to give a tip of the hat to Alabama's defense. You're, you're they right. played great here in the first half. They are, the reason, the ball. they are the reason that their team is in this ball game with all the miscues that they had in the first quarter. So the Sooners now with their third punt coming up. Ferguson waits for the snap back at the three yard line. Triandos Luke, who got decked last time, is back at a single safety at the 39. Wobbly spiral, and Luke runs away from it and is not going to field it for it. Folks, it's going to cost him 20 yards or maybe more. Luke should have come up and caught that football because it bounded between the 45 and the 50, and they're going to have to scrimmage at the 23-yard line. It's a 60-yard kick. Well, Sunday morning at 11 Eastern, it's NFL Countdown, presented by Old Spice. Join Chris Gorman and the gang as they report from all the games with up-to-the-minute stats and news. This week, Jeremy Shockey goes one-on-one -on -one with Jamal Anderson. Tom Jackson looks into the coaching dynamics between Mike Singletary and Ray Lewis. That's NFL Countdown tomorrow at 11 a.m. Shad Williams back in the ball game, a tailback for Alabama. He gets the handoff of a counter trade right up the middle, and again, middle linebacker Lance Mitchell. He has been tough. Reese Davis on check. Well, I'll tell you what, Pete Carroll and that group out there on the left coast, uh, they have done a really nice job. Quick pass, got it complete. Enough for the first down, plus about nine yards to Zach Fletcher, the senior out of Moulton, and he's tackled by Derek Strait. Zach Fletcher is a basketball star in high school, but Dave Raiders said he never hear the ball hit his hands because he, he has such soft hands. He's a pretty good target, too. That's an interesting observation. And when he said that in our meeting yesterday, I thought you don't hear a lot of coaches no. say that because how many are that good that, that doesn't happen? And he's the leading receiver for this Alabama football team. He's a big play receiver. Brody Coyle, 6 of 9, 53 yards, intercepted on first pass tonight. Since then has settled down. Steps up, going to go long. Got a man wide open, and he overthrows him at the 20-yard line. It was Fletcher, and Coyle paid for it. But when you see the replay on this, I mean, he looked like the first guy out to the workout for a moment as Dusty Dvorak came in with the pressure. Well, Dvorak is going to hit. Brody Croy, well, as soon as he threw the football, didn't get a chance, hit him in his right arm. And that's the pressure you see. But I was just going to say, as you talk about Brody, he has settled down a lot since the start of this football game. So the Crimson Tide misses a huge opportunity. But because of the pressure, right at the middle of the run, has five, has 10, 15, and counted off at 20 yards, Sean Williams. 
Jonathan Jackson on the tackle and they'll say officially his knee touch after gaining 18. Longest gain from scrimmage tonight. Season long for Shad Williams. Shad Williams is a quick running back. He told us about the offensive plays. He's been to Texas Tech. He's had Dennis Francione. He's had Mike Price's offense. He's had Mike Shula's offense. He said sometimes when they call the play, I don't know where I'm at. But he knew where he was at on that play. And that's what you get against a quick defense. Sometimes you can pop one out the backside. You see the numbers on Williams. And now Brody Croyle is going to call a timeout. 9-10 left until halftime. Six to nothing. Oklahoma still on top. Call ATT for collect calls. It's free for them and cheap for you. So we are back. Nine minutes and ten seconds left until halftime. Crowd came to their feet where the offense uh, broke from the sideline huddle and they scrimmage from the 41 of Oklahoma. Clint Johnston in motion, number 88. And again, a little counter play right up the middle, but boy, how many times have we already called Lance Mitchell's name? And he has done it by himself on most of those tackles. Just really doing a devastatingly good job in the middle as a uh, linebacker play the way it's supposed to be done, Mike Godfrey. Yeah, the co-coordinator said he has unbelievable instincts. He was a tailback and linebacker in high school, scored 35 touchdowns as a senior running back. So that tells you what a gifted athlete he is in the middle linebacker spot. Brent Venables, the co-defensive coordinator. You could see him on the sideline. Second down, Croyle sets deep in the pocket, screen back to the near side, and gets by one tackle. Good heavens, what an open field hit by Brandon Everidge. And this is exactly what Coach Godfrey was talking about. It, and the offensive coordinator said it yesterday. Dave Raider said you get hit by one and even if he misses the tackle they they get so much help so quickly. Yeah Brandon Everidge uh, there was uh, not clear whether he's going to make the trip but he he made a great tackle on that play. He has been instrumental in the secondary of making big, big plays. And you see his numbers tied for the Big 12 lead in interceptions last year. Alabama one of five on third down conversions and they need about 11 to pick it up pressure off the edge Carl's going to step up he's going to run it and he is going to have the first down this time Teddy Lehman comes over to make the tackle on him 14 yards on the carry by Brody Croyle pretty good job by the offensive tackle Atlas Harrion of running the defensive end around and uh, Brody Crow just finds a seam and picks up a big first down. New line of scrimmage is the 29. Got a good block from Zach Fletcher. Hudson checks into the ball game at tailback number 27. This time it's cabin in motion. They give it to Hudson right up the middle. Hurdles one. He's going to have close to five yards in the play. Everidge coming up from his free safety position to make the tackle. As we're about to go under seven minutes remaining, first half. Good play calling by Dave Raider. Keeping the uh, Oklahoma defense at bay a little bit with his play calling. Now, the scramble by Brody Coral was a big play in this series. Oklahoma makes you settle for threes down here. Shad Williams, you see him working those fingers on that right hand. He may have gotten popped on the funny bone. Ninth play of the drive. And again, that same kind of play. Lehman is there to make the stop. Ray Hudson, the ball carrier. They run little counters and the little draws. Shad Williams, you see his numbers, averaging over five yards per try. Now Kenneth Darby is coming to the lineup. And the trainer is going to work on that right wrist. Let's see if they go to Fletcher here, Ron. Put him on. We got him splitting out here to the left side. Zach Fletcher, bottom of your screen. Got Luke on the other side. Flatcher looking into the face of Derek Strait. He's got him one on one on the near side. Yeah, you know, when you look at this matchup and you've got Derek Strait on Zach Fletcher, you might want to go over to Trandus Luke. 
who split out. He's on Antonio Perkins. There's no bargain out there. No, Triandos, obviously, a great explosion. He's to the top of your screen. They have a draw play, and this is not going to do anything. A slow developing play. It's Darby who's hit way back behind the line of scrimmage. Anything that happens slow, it's hard to fool this defense. And, it, and a sign of a great defense is when they shut you out of the end zone and then force you to the field goal attempt. And both Alabama's Oklahoma's defense has done that. That just was uh, a bust from the time it was started. Corey Klein on the play. A little shovel pass and a 44 yard attempt coming up. Ryan Bostic. The ball almost squarely in the middle of the field. Alabama trying to get on the board with just under five minutes to play until halftime. He's got the distance and he's good. So we'll take a timeout. 4.55 left until intermission and our new score Oklahoma 6. Alabama three. This is not good news for Alabama fans. Shad Williams, we told you, had injured his arm, and we had found it on the replay. Everett, look at the headgear right on that wrist. So it was not the funny bone. He kept rubbing up and down the arm, but as you can see, the headgear right there, and he catches him right on the left wrist. So they've taken him to the locker room for uh, X-rays, and we'll get a report just as soon as we can. There's a gentleman who hit him. It's uh, Everett. Oklahoma should return his kickoff last year last week. They got to kick off to about the 10 yard line See if they can get it further Jeff Hall prepares to kick it off for the Crimson Tide 6-3 our new score very high And with the win this is going to come down right at the goal line. It is Rankins Rankins tackled before he reaches the 20 yard line Thurman Ward well, tonight's AFLAC trivia question. Who was the quarterback of the winning team in the first game between Oklahoma and Alabama? An answer later on. Now Oklahoma's offense got to find a way to move the ball and keep their defense off the field. A defensive battle. Two really solid defenses going at it. Crowd again is up. And cheering on this Alabama defense. Kevon Jones operates a tailback this time. He gets the handoff on the sweep. Nothing there. Tries to cut it back inside. Nice job by Freddie Roach. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? I did make contact with the medical staff of Alabama as they were taking Shaw Williams into the locker room. Again, due to new federal regulation, I cannot give you any information they don't give me. But the inside to his right wrist is probably going to require x-rays. That's all I have at this point. Clock runs four minutes and 17 now four minutes and 16 seconds and in this quarter instead of good field position Oklahoma has had poor field position they throw the middle screen big opening here 30 35 40 Mark Bradley and Bradley finally pushed out of bounds by Roman Harper and a long gainer on the part of the Sooners and they flip the field as it's good for 35 yards. Quick screen out to the left. Mark Bradley's going to get this in your right, Ronnie. Got some great blocks. He got a good block by Mark Clayton, the wide receiver, and flips the field in uh, coverage. Roman Harper makes the play. I just think about Oklahoma. They had only had 105 yards rushing last week. Haven't been able to run the ball that well this this game. You see the numbers on white. Going to go up the sideline. Fade route got a man wide open at the 10 yard line, and he will score. Mark Clayton. Charles Jones got roasted. 46 yards on the play. I don't know if they busted the coverage or they weren't set. But Clayton looked like he was all alone. Sooners will not go for two. They will kick the extra point. Trey DiCarlo lines it up, trying to put Oklahoma up by 10. He's got it perfect right down the middle. 
Three plays, 81 yards. It only needed 70 or 61 seconds. We'll take a timeout. New score, Oklahoma 13 to 3. Oklahoma by 10, and the uh, Alabama defense bought the fake, didn't they, Mike? Yeah, they faked a quick screen out to the left side, and Alabama thought they were going to run the quick screen, and Mark Clayton did a good job of hesitating like he was going to block, and then took off. When credit Jason White threw an absolutely perfect pass, here's to Carlos' kick. This time into the wind, and he's not going to reach the end zone on this. What he does, it's right at the goal line. This is Hudson. 15 and he won't make the 20 yard line both of these special teams tonight as Wilson is down to make the touchdown Mike talk about it here's the fake quick screen right here but watch Mark Clayton he's like he's going to block and then he takes off right here and both Alabama secondary guys bite on the fake and the speed of Mark Clayton is too late for Charles Jones to catch up with him well designed football play by Chuck Long the offensive coordinator Kenneth Darby back into the lineup at tailback. Shot Williams did just sprint out of the locker room and came back to the sideline. Happy to report that, but he's well enough to come back. Pass intended for Triandos Luke, covered by Antonio Perkins, but it was too tall. So three minutes, 42 seconds left in what has been a very rapid first half. They have really gone after each other defensively, and the offenses have not prevailed until that last drive. One big play, uh, yep. you can get it all back. Two, actually, though, because the yep. long pass play that they had before the touchdown, Mike, so they needed only three, and it took 61 seconds for OU to get it in the end zone. Call drills it over the middle. Oh, boy. Dre Fulgham. Dre Fulgham just dropped it. Reese, let's check with him. That's a surprise. I was going to ask you, how shocked are you? I'm shocked. Uh, with two young quarterbacks for Florida, of course, their defense is getting it done. Another third and long for Alabama's offense. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Coyle running for his life, and he just throws this one away. Lance Mitchell is the guy who was just all over him. Brody Crawl is no place to throw this football. And you look at the front on a slant, bringing Mitchell on the outside. He just throw, wisely throws the ball away. Boy, and Fulgham, that drop pass would have put him a Dang. first down and still an opportunity to come away with points. Fifth punt of the night by Alabama. Wobbly spiral. And it's Rankins. Comes back to the open side of the field. He's got to be hit with a good open field tackle. 40 on the kick and only two on the return. Well, the answer to tonight's Aflac trivia question, who was the quarterback of the winning team in the first game between Oklahoma and Alabama, is uh, Joe Willie Namath. Alabama defeated Oklahoma 17 to nothing in the 63 Orange Bowl. Player of the game, Leroy Jordan, with 31 tackles. Wow. If you had to put that uh, phone number up there, all Mobile would have called in. They had, had, had that answer. And Kenny Staber right beside us, my favorite Alabama quarterback right there. Snake. Got the visor on. He's he is the uh, color analyst for the Alabama Radio ne Network, working he, with Eli Gold. We have two down in Mobile, Scott Hunter also. Pass here in the flat, caught by Brandon Jones, and he's going to be hit immediately, just shy of the 50-yard line. Roman Harper there defensively. I think this is the biggest series of the game for Alabama's defense, because if they somehow Oklahoma scores this, I don't think your offense is good enough to come back from that kind of uh, deficit right now. So Joe Kynes has a lot of pressure on his defense right now to shut this Oklahoma offense down. Going under two minutes 45 seconds left until halftime. Runnels in motion, but they go with the draw play, and Jones close to the first down. Going to be tackled from where the side judges put his foot down. Jeremy Clark is there to put the stop on him. I I don't think he has it. Nope. See the yellow line, and he's going to be about a yard short. So it's third down, Oklahoma. Spread offense right now. You got to draw. You also got the quick passing game. 
We know Jason White with that brace is not going to be an option quarterback. Who's not going to be a running quarterback. Under two minutes left until halftime. Alabama crowding the line of scrimmage and then an audible it appears by White. Flag goes down and the play has been whistled down as he got bumped and knocked out of bounds. Anthony Bryant jumped across but but came back. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense, five yards, still. Well, you talked down. about Anthony Bryant jumping, but somebody twitched in the offensive line of Oklahoma to get him to come across. Well, take a look at it yourself here, Mike. Yeah, Anthony Bryant. I, I see the uh, tight end moving a little bit. His head. Bubba Moses, uh, yeah. James Moses. Somebody had to move inside for Bryant to come up. Oh, you rushing 11 tries, 43 yards. Jones, 10 for 39, and works one for four. Third and six. White, pressure is on, gets it complete, and he's not going to have the first down as it was thrown to Donnelly. Lance primarily as a blocker, senior out of Weatherford, Oklahoma. Well, that's the defense you needed in this situation right here. To shut Oklahoma down with good field position. Jason White, he knows the rush has been big on him tonight from Alabama. Tries to scoot the ball out, but not enough for the first down. Alabama late in calling the timeout. They did stop it with 65 seconds left in this first half. And now they just said reset the clock to 111. And Reese Davis, let's check back with you. What you got coming up? Defense, we've seen a couple here tonight that <laughs> I think I would go to the bank with because, Mike, as you said, you know, Oklahoma gets so much credit and rightfully so. But this Alabama defense has got nothing to be ashamed of, particularly considering field position they've had to guard. No, I agree. And the referee just put more time on the clock. Both <laughs> defenses said put 10 more minutes on there. Their offense is not going to move against these defenses. So it's been a, a great first half for our Oklahoma's defense and they got the big pass to Mark Clayton so uh, they're riding high with a 10 point lead and that may be enough but uh, it's too early to tell Alabama really was a second half ball club last week against South Florida. So we'll see and if you just joined us Alabama just started off woefully slow in the first quarter and really fortunate that they didn't give up more points than they no. did because they turned the ball over they snapped the ball off the quarterback's head here they just didn't do a lot of things right but then they got on track they do have three points and hoping that with 111 showing on the clock that they might be able to get in field position to get more driving spiral this is going to go into the end zone. It's a 50-yard punt, and they'll have 80 yards to go. But tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN Sunday Night Football, it's a rematch of last year's AFC Championship game as the Tennessee Titans try for revenge against the Oakland Raiders. That's Raiders versus the Titans Sunday night, 8.30 on ESPN, and available nationwide on ESPN HD. It all starts with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. Ron, they're going to talk to Mike Price at halftime, Reese and uh, Trev and Mark. And I just want to say that Mike Price, the players talked about Mike Price. They really, really loved Mike Price here in the time he was here. From the shotgun, they go with the draw play. It's Hudson. Going to have five yards, maybe six. Yep, he's going to fight his way forward. Second effort. Gain of seven on the play, 55 seconds. Lance Mitchell records still another tackle. I think against this defense, you don't want to make a mistake here. You want to do everything safe here and go in 13 to 3, not give them another chance. Quick pass out in the flat. Bolton catches this one, and that's good for the first down and gets out of bounds as Everidge is over there defensively to make the hit on him. They'll give you that five yard pass. They're going to trade it for a headache. They tackle in the secondary. Brandon Everidge is a very good tackling safety corner type player I mean he is he brings it he's six foot 202 but he tackles everybody in that secondary brings oh, it it appears the whole group 
Rushing with the down four. They don't send anybody. Fulgham gets hit as soon as he makes the catch by this time Antonio Perkins out of Lawton, Oklahoma. And now timeout has been taken by Alabama to stop the clock with 27 seconds left on the game clock. Yeah, not many weak spots on this defense. You got to be real patient against this defensive uh, front and outfit of Mike Stoops and Brent Venables. Maybe a screen here, Ron, or draw, see what they can pick up or chunk it down the field. Even if it's picked off, you, you it's like a punt. So uh, you got some options if you're Mike Shula. He probably hadn't seen a defense like this since the pros. <laughs> 27 seconds left until intermission time, and you see Alabama now out of timeouts. Uh, Oklahoma has one, and uh, they would not want to use that unless they come up with a turnover. And a good look at this uh, defense, Teddy Lehman. Great story on him uh, during the, the, the spring. Uh, he got into a race with the defensive backs and the wide receivers. Finished third. They <laughs> timed him at 4-4. Four, four. And the guy's a linebacker. So you talk about speed off the edge. I mean, good heavens. Yeah, they were uh, talking about who's the fastest. He jumped in there. He's 245 <laughs> at 6-2. You know, they said also he has worked on his speed. Now, he won the 100-yard dash when he was in high school. But uh, it was not nearly what he runs today so he has worked on it as and has improved tremendously I don't know if I've seen two better linebackers than Mitchell and Lehman together Coil tonight 10 of 17 one interception good for 59 yards second down here pressure off the corner Brody steps up gonna go long got a man caught and out of bounds at the 20 Zach Fletcher no. No, say out of bounds Whoa, the Alabama coaching staff all the way down the sideline. Well, that's exactly what Brody Froyle was doing. He was just going to chunk it down the football field for Zach Fletcher. As you can see, Dad down there preparing for halftime. And look at his feet as he catches it. Now, let's see. Let's see if he has possession because one foot was in right there, and then he steps down. Yep. Good catch. One more time. All right, it is there. Yep. That is a catch. That is a completion. Mike Shula uh, with once that red flag to throw out there for a replay. <laughs> Coyle's pass is caught. Good for the first down. Did he get out of bounds? It'll uh, stop the clock here with about 11 ticks. <laughs> you can see Don Shula. He's, He's reaching for the red flag, too. For something he's doing at halftime and uh, boy he was reacting when he saw that replay up on the screen this is the first time that he has seen an Alabama game here he's seen one in Birmingham but not in Tuscaloosa because he was always coaching Coy, he just going to do the wise right. thing and go down and the clock runs out we are at halftime as Berdine was the man who put the pressure on him So as they head to the locker room, Oklahoma with a very big three-play drive to score a touchdown in the second quarter has lengthened it out to a 10-point margin. Adrian Carson, let's check with you. Well, Coach, you're up by 10 at the half, but what scares you most about Alabama right now? Well, um, I don't know. What do you mean scares me? We're, they're, they're a good football team. We're doing all right. We're up 13-3. We had some other opportunities that we let get away. Uh, we'll try and be a little more efficient on offense and defense. My point is about the end of the first half. They're a very potentially big play team. Well, sure. You know, about everyone you play is. Okay. Thank you, Coach. All right, Adrian. We are at halftime with our score. Oklahoma 13 and Alabama 3. Now here's Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, and Mark May with the Pontiac <laughs> High Performance Halftime Report. Pretty much what it is right there. It was sort of reminiscent of the game in Norman last year. It was tight for a while. Oklahoma came up with some offensive plays late in the first half to build a little bit of a lead. Yeah, they have. And I've been impressed with Alabama and what they're doing offensively. They're staying this game, Mark. And what they're doing is spreading the field with a one-back offense, creating space. And I've been impressed with Brody Croyle. Step 
stepping up, stepping away from pressure. And by the way, that was a completion, should have been a nice completion there late in the first half. Yes, I want to echo the sentiments of, of Coach Godfrey in the booth. That was a completion. That was a horrible call by the official. But I think what's important here is what different uh, decisions Mike Shula makes at halftime. It's halftime adjustments. Last week against South Florida, they went into the locker room, calm down. Okay, this is what we're going to do, A, B, C, and D. He has to do the same thing here, but he has to find a way to put points on the scoreboard for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Happens bang, bang, always tough for the officials, but you know what happens whenever a call like that goes that way. People say, Big 12 official? Yeah. yeah like, immediately. That, that's the, that's the way it goes, though. That's the way it goes sometimes. We'll have Don Shula talk. Godfrey, except for the second half here, guys. Okay, thanks so much, Chris. Uh, that's what we've talked about the entire first half, how how well this Alabama defense has played. When you look at OU, only has five first downs, Mike, 13 points, but uh, they took advantage of particularly the one situation in the second quarter. Halftime of the Alabama locker room. You know, what do you think uh, Mike went in there and said to uh, his charges? I think he thinks he's playing against the Miami Dolphins and the Tampa Bay Bucks defense. Uh, but I, I think, again, he's got to find a way to run the ball. Here's a key play just before half when uh, the referee called this play out of bounds. It looks like he's clearly got it put in bounds uh, making the catch Zach Fletcher which would allow them maybe a chance to kick a field goal. But Ron, I think you, you still got to find a way to run the football screens, draws, try to slow them down a little bit and take your shots downfield. Well, here are the halftime stats. We gave you a couple of those numbers, but interesting to see that the Oklahoma Sooners, five first downs, eight for Alabama. And rushing yards, and Mike, you made this point several times in that first half. Uh, OU in their opening ball game against North Texas did not run the ball as well as the coaching staff would have liked. No, and I think you'll see them try to run the ball in the second half to take some clock off and uh, protect their defense a little bit. But when you look at Oklahoma, two out of eight on third down conversions, they can't get the uh, chains moving either. Jason White on the sidelines. One of the things that Adrian talked about down on the sideline was White came back in the second quarter and said, hey, guys, I'm getting hit on every down. Give me a little better protection. From the five, Rankins. So tonight's game track being brought to you by Bridgestone. Brody, he got knocked around in that first half. And in fact, on that pass right there, if the pressure had not been coming, that could have turned into a touchdown for the Alabama Crimson Tide. This hit right there on Sean Williams by Everidge, who, by the way, has nine first-half tackles, turned out to be huge. And I don't know if we're going to see Sean Williams again in the first half. And then White to Clayton, the connection, three-play drive. It took 61 seconds, and that's how we stand, 13-3. to three. Everidge, nine tackles, seven solo. Draw play. Jones. Hit first by Roman Harper. Let's go to the sideline. We mentioned the big guy. Adrian, what do you got for us? How about a little bit shorter guy? Sean Williams, who has been cleared to play in the second half. He held the ball, gripped the ball in both hands. No problem with either wrist. X-rays were negative, so he has been cleared to play. That is just simply Coach Shula's decision. On defense, coordinator Joe Kine says, we simply won the first half. That's all there is to it. But remember, this game is like a family reunion. We're all going to have to bring a dish to pass. So let's go. <laughs> okay, David. So in other words, the offense and the special teams got to bring a dish or baked beans or something. Might need a little bit more sustenance than that. White almost to the line of scrimmage, drills the pass. Travis Wilson catches it and then catches a defensive back by the name of Charlie Pepper. And they've stayed away from Charlie in this ballgame. Yeah, Charlie Pepper is the guy that Joe Kine said makes a play in every practice. You look at Oklahoma Sooners, they had great field position right here. The first three times they had the ball. They got two field goals and they had to punt. Then it changed a little bit for them, and they got a big pass play to Clayton, Mark Clayton, when they started on their own 19. Well, it's third down, and those defensive players out on the field turning to the crowd and putting their arms, thrusting them skyward, saying, hey, make some noise, help us out here. D'Amico Ryan's one of those cheerleading, and he's had a very good ball game. The best offense Alabama may have is their defense right now. One of the things, though, that the Sooners have been very tidy with 
And that is taking care of the football and not making errors to allow the opposition uh, to get the ball. That's what Bob Stoops said about the opener. He said the best opener they've had in five years because they took care of the ball. They had one interception. They were trying to make something happen before half. Well, as you can see, the officials had a discussion. Uh, it's, I <laughs> don't know what about, but that's happened several times in this ball game tonight. And now we're ready to roll. Third down, about seven and a half. Need to take it out across the 28-yard line to keep this football. Alabama shows blitz in the middle. And they stay at home. White, near sideline. Well overthrown to the delight of the partisan household here at Bryant-Denny. These fans know that last week in the second half, Alabama turned it on, and they, they feel like they can do a great job with their conditioning. Here's the rush on Jason White. Boy, did he take a Childress. shot. And then Childress, you could see one of the linemen piled in on his back, and both players have stayed down. It is though both of these players are injured on this play right here. White appears to be uh, okay, and the reason he couldn't get up is because Ahmad Childress was on top of him. And Ahmad is 6'5", 358 pounds, a junior out of Nashville, and Ahmad is still down. And with those two knee injuries for Jason White, he's not going to be able to dodge much in the uh, quarterback position. So Ahmad is up, and he's going to come off under his own strength. That is a big man. Adrian's a large guy, and they stood side by side, and it, it, they formed the number 10. Adrian was the one. So 13-59 left to play, third quarter. Special teams, again, defense and special teams may be Alabama's best shot to score. Do you return, Mike, or you... I you think I go after it. No, Ferguson standing make something happen. back at the six-yard line. And he got it. It went forward, bounding at the 44-yard line, and it appears Chris James is the man who got a hand on it. The kick, 23 yards. That's what you want on a Chris James blocking that kick. Now you got great field position to take some shots here against this Oklahoma defense. Boy, Oklahoma got fortunate that that ball went really forward. Did. They had a kick blocked last week against North Texas. It's like he had overrun it. Sometimes that happens. It uh, shouldn't happen. You take the ball off the foot of the kicker. Shad Williams back in the ball game as Adrian said he has been cleared to play. Cabin to tight end flips left over to the right. Shad Williams right side blocker in front not much there with that the very stingy Oklahoma defense Lance Mitchell leading the attack. That's six tackles for him and Mike talk about the yeah, first half and their wow. possessions. You know you look at punt 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 field goal punt. So the kicking game, bad field position the whole first half. Now this is the, you start the second half with great field position. You have to take advantage of it. Still look for Zach Fletcher. He's the big play wide receiver. He's going into the short side of the field over here. Well, short yardage shy of the 40 yard line. Dan Cody is there defensively to make the hit on Shad Williams. Every player we talk to, every newspaper you read, talks about Alabama's conditioning, the gassers they do after practice. They even put the championship rings pictures of the seven national championship rings, the recent rings, and blew them up so that they knew when they went out to practice and they conditioned what they were conditioning for. Alabama players believe the second half is theirs three of nine third down conversions for the Crimson Tide from the shotgun pressure off the corner Coyle stands up got to go long and got it inside nope they say out of bounds Boy, great great catch. Catch. wow 
over the shoulder. And Ron, he did that against Derek Strait. Now, he may have ran out of a little real estate, but uh, makes a great catch, good concentration. And the fans here uh, react. Well, judge for yourself. Hey, he was bobbling it. Yeah, I, I think right. it's a good call. Yeah. Yep, he did not come down clean with it, and I'm not sure the fans here could no. see that. They didn't see a second replay. Timeout for Oklahoma. They, they may have had too many men on the field. They do. They got 12 men. They called a timeout. They wasted a couple timeouts in the first half because of having the wrong personnel on the field. They had 12 men on the field. Lucky to get the timeout. Boy, that's for sure. We'll take the timeout with them. 12 19, remaining third quarter. OU by 10. Some of the sights and sounds here at Bryant Denny Stadium on this Saturday night. Number one, Oklahoma leading by 10. This is the sixth punt of the ball game by Alabama. Very, very high. Spiral's not going to turn over. This could be difficult to catch. Now takes a big Oklahoma bounce. Now an Alabama roll, and it's going to go inside the 30 and be touched dead at around the 28 yard line. 13 Did, yards. Yeah, in they the punt. didn't get what they wanted there. <laughs> You just look at Mike Shula on the sideline. You wonder how the staff has adjusted because everything's new for them. They weren't here in spring practice. So everything, the communication on the sideline, the half times, everything's new. First time here at, at uh, Tuscaloosa for them to work together as a staff. Ronaldo works, checks back into the ball game at tailback in the 47. He comes up the block, pass is complete, and then a pretty good lick is hit on uh, Jones. Brandon Jones, a junior. Derek Pope is the man who got there to him first. Yeah, one of the questions uh, I asked him yesterday was, because you needed to spend so much time with the offense, did you literally just turn the defense over to Joe Kynes? And he said, absolutely, because we just didn't have enough days to, for me to spend that much time with the defensive unit. And three former head coaches, uh, Dave Rader, Tulsa, and South Carolina, Sparky Woods. Good to see Sparky the other day. Left Mississippi State's program to come over here. Second down and four, and it's uh, Ronaldo Works. Going to be tackled by D'Amico Ryan. Sophomore out of Bessemer. I think Oklahoma's one score away from putting this game away. Now, it's hard to say that with 11.09, but the way their defense has controlled the action on the field, uh, Alabama has to get something going on defense. Bobby Stoop knows, Stoops knows that his defense really has Alabama's offense bottled up. So what you're saying is that the Alabama defense they got to have it to score. Or special teams. On the shotgun, rolls it to his left, gets it out in the flat, and it is caught for the first down. Mark Clayton, the junior out of Arlington, Texas. By the way, we determined it has been a, well, as you look at it one more time. Zach Fletcher has caught three passes that He's been out of bounds. That's what they call that. It one was if those were inbounds, inbounds, it'd yeah. been 116 yards more on the offense, well, which is almost as much total offense as Alabama has right now. They have 124. I think he was in on one, though. Yeah, he was. I don't think there's any question. Long up the sideline, and he caught it at the 20-yard line. Mark Bradley. Well, that ball was thrown as well as you can throw a football. 43 yards. Yeah, Jason White, who turned down Miami to come to Oklahoma, just throws a perfect pass to Mark Bradley. Pretty well defended by Anthony Madison, but not much you can do there. No, he was just full out. He didn't have to slow up, didn't have to speed up or anything. It was just right in his hands. 
First down, Oklahoma. Bradley, two catches now for 78 yards. Works. That's a good job of training the play, not in the Kay Lozier, number 90. McKay Lozier does a nice job here because that's an option play, but you know Jason White's not going to pull it out and run. So go ahead and make the play on Ronaldo Works and give up the outside because you know there's no way Jason White's going to run the football. Wilson in motion to the bottom of your screen. They give it to Works, hit in the backfield, going to be knocked down for a loss. Ahmad Childress made contact with him first. You're not going to run this ball into the end zone if you're Oklahoma. You're going to have to throw it in. Childress, who last week they started Jeremy Clark to get the attention of Bon Mott Childress, and they got his attention because he is making play after play. And at almost 360 pounds, is extremely difficult to uh, to move. Third down averages. I mean, it's you're up there all the time. Oklahoma going to burn another timeout. This is an important play, oh, so you need to take a timeout call of this one. So we'll take the break. Oklahoma 13 to three and threatening. We'll be right back. So we're back. An all-important play for the Sooners and for Alabama. Third down, and they need to take it down to the seven-yard line. Draw a play, or do you throw it? I think they're going to throw it. Wilson in motion. Fade route, near sideline, well overthrown. You throw the pass like that, an inside fade route to Travis Wilson, but you still had the field goal. You know that your defense, again, has Alabama's offense bottled up. So you throw a safe throw over the sideline. Wilson makes a move, but he's really defended well. Odom really put a lick on White after he threw it, and McCain Lozier was coming pell-mell from the left side. DiCarlo perfect on the year. Two tonight, three last week. 31 yards is this attempt. No good. DiCarlo really took his time as if he like hitting a wedge, didn't have to hit it that hard, just get it up quickly. And he yanked it wide to the right. And new life for the uh, Tide. But the bad news is you got the ball in your own 20. You see uh, Coach Shula signaling. No, it was not good. It was wide but left. I said right. From the direction I saw the replay, it was yeah, right. right. Difference? But <laughs> he missed it. Shad Williams back in the tailback. Two tights, two wide receivers. And on the play action, gets it out, and he's got his tight end. That's Johnston. And Clint. We'll take it up around the 29 yard line before Derek Strait makes the tackle. Good call because misdirection on a speed team might slow him down a little bit. Mike Shula hitting that uh, tight end. Then Johnson on the counter fake. Mike Shula calling the plays here for Alabama. With Dave Rader on the other side of the headset. Triandos look goes to the top of your screen. Shad Williams straight ahead though, and he runs into his own blocker. He's going to have the first down after a gain of one. Teddy Lehman is there to make the tackle for the Oklahoma Sooners. Oklahoma in a short yardage situation, crawling up there with eight people, and Lehman holds on to make the tackle. Need a big play. -o. You need um, what I mean by that is you need a big play. You're not going to take this ball 80 yards on them first down at the first down. First and ten this time from the 32. They try the sweep. And this is where Oklahoma is normally devastating. Turn the corner. 
and with some good blocking actually picks up positive yardage and that's what is difficult to do against this fast defense Nicholson and also Mitchell combining to the tackle shows you what a gutsy runner shot Williams is bangs it up in there and Dante Nicholson kind of lost a little running back the five nine guy couldn't find him I thought it was funny what Sean Williams said said his teammates asked him what's the difference between Tuscaloosa and uh, and Lubbock and he pointed up he said see all these trees they don't have those things out there in West Texas <laughs> are not nearly as many of them. <laughs> Now throws it long. Broken assignment wide open for him. 30, 25, and finally pushed out of bounds by Dante Nicholson. Good for 42 yards. Somebody had to have blown one yeah, there, Mike. That's what you need. Oh, you need a big play against those guys. Lance Mitchell, the linebacker, he Let came across him, and I don't know if he was supposed to pick him up or not, but folds him wide open. Turned him loose and then tried to, to catch up with him. You can see him right there, and it was too late. Again, Alabama's players feel like they're in better condition than any other football team in the country. Second half is theirs. Deepest penetration of the night by the Crimson Tide. And now Alabama has to burn a timeout as Brody Croyle was not pleased with the alignment, so they have to use one. 10-point lead, Alabama threatening. Well, Mike Shula trying to come up with a comeback, and he understands it even as a player. 1985 between the hedges against Georgia. Three consecutive pass completions. The tide was down 16 to 13. He continues to thread the needle, and it will be Alabama with a five-play, 71-yard drive, and they win it over Georgia in Athens by a score of 20 to 16. That is exactly what head coach Mike Shula is looking for right now. See the numbers 22 8 and 1 as a starting quarterback from 84 to 1986. Teddy Lehman says nope we're not going to have any of that. He is poised and ready play action here comes the pressure. Kyle gets by the first defender now lobs this one and it's a little too tall. Shad Williams could not handle it and it was Dan Cody who interrupted the entire play with the pressure. Yeah Dan Cody with a good pressure. Sean Williams, you'd like for him to be a six foot running back instead of <laughs> five nine right here. Brody Croy does a nice job of getting away, just a little too high on the throw. Floater. Second down. Royal, deep drop, far sideline, drills the pass, touchdown to Yambus Luke. Derek Strait had the coverage, and he couldn't handle him. Triandos with a 20-yard touchdown. And the extra point attempt coming right now was Alabama tries to make it a three point margin. Bostic, good pass, kick right down the middle. Well, Alabama beat the best in Derek Strait. Brandis Luke, you're going to see the tight end come down and move out. You're going to see the post by Luke and beat straight right here. Tight end occupies the safety, and then he bends out. Post route comes wide open Boy. to Trandis Luke. And Mike perfectly thrown. I mean, it just, look at the trajectory on this ball. Beautifully thrown ball. Good protection. Everything was right. Well, <laughs> this crowd is back to frenzy mode, which is the way they started the night. Pretty good drive. They needed big plays. If they got a great drive, good call again by Mike Shula. 
Six plays, 80 yards, a minute, 28 seconds. And Luke with the 20-yard touchdown catch. Two of the most storied programs in college football. Last year at Oklahoma, the Alabama people commented about how much they enjoyed seeing the OU traditions and to see and listen to their crowd. And I have a feeling tonight, although they probably don't enjoy this only three-point margin now, but they're seeing an eye-opening affair here because if you've never been to a game in Tuscaloosa, it's it's a happening, folks. It, I know tomorrow is the religious day, but the religious day in this state begins tonight and goes through tomorrow. Jeff Hall to kick it off for the Crimson Tide. Very high, and this one is returnable. From the three-yard line is Rankins. Rankins gets free across the 30 to the 32. 29 yards on the return. Thurman Ward was there to make the play. Sooners got away with a block in the back on that return. Jason White, 12 out of 24. And the thing, because you can't run the football, you can't run the clock, so you, the quarterback in the passing game's got to get the first downs and uh, hurry the clock along. But Alabama's defense played as well as Oklahoma's defense in this football game. Vince Carter continues to operate at the center for the Sooners. Draw play, ran into his own blocker, and the man who made the tackle was actually Wes Sims. They were pulling him out on the play, and Jones, who was only 5'9", 187, watched this collision. You know, this is a tackle in the backfield. Wes just out there trying to do his job, but he weighs 317, and he knocked his own guy down. When you hit somebody at 317, they're going to go down. From the shotgun, White gets it complete to the 30-yard line, Travis Wilson, and that was quite a stick by D'Amico Ryans. And now this crowd is just going in orbit. It is going to be third down, and the line to make is out to the 42-yard line. We talked about the secondary of Oklahoma making good tackles. Secondary and the linebackers of Alabama will wrap you up, too. Those guys look like they're enjoying this. And that's the confidence you get as a quarterback when your coach is a former quarterback. Oklahoma's going to have to hurry. They only have one timeout left for the entire game. Down to three seconds, got it off. Now here comes the pressure, throws it in. It is caught at the 40-yard line. Nope, he did not get his feet inbound. Brandon Jones went so high that he could not get a foot down. Being a, a great athlete actually got him in trouble, Mike. Watch this play here. I don't think he had the football. No, didn't have possession. Remember, Alabama has blocked a punt. They got their hand on a punt. You can see the ball being transferred from left hand to right. And as a result, the official had to call him out. Six times OU has had the punt this evening. Here they come right up the middle. And they're going to throw a pass, and it's complete at the 30-yard line. 40, 45 to the 50. Michael Thompson. And how about that gamble by Coach Stoops? 24 well, when you, yards. When you have a defense like he's got, that's still the gamble. Because he knew Alabama was going to come after this punt. Now everybody has a man. You still have somebody on the man-for-man -man coverage. But a great call by Bobby Stoops. Set up perfect. Blake Ferguson with the pass. Michael Thompson with the catch. And you could see Ferguson, he wasn't worried about aesthetics. He just wanted to make sure he got it to the proper spot, which he did. Kevon Jones, number 20, ports in at tailback. It's Reynolds in motion. Oklahoma got to go for it all, heading for the end zone, and it is caught at the five and touchdown Brandon Jones. 
47 yards in the pass play. You made the point last week. Great teams come back with the retort, and they came back very quickly. You got to go back to the fake punt. That was a great call. And then you got to, you got Alabama sitting back a little bit because they just got bit on the fake punt, and then you throw the strike to Brandon Jones. Uh, two great play calls by Chuck Long and his head coach, Bobby Stoops. Jason White and his ability to throw with great touch on the long pass. And long ball is perfect. Really impressive. Really impressive. Dick Carlo with the extra point attempt. He's got it. When you're on the road, you got to do things like that. 431 remaining, third quarter, and our new score at a hushed Bryant Denny Stadium. As you look at Brandon Jones, it is Oklahoma 20, Alabama 10. Good look at Brandon Jones, the book on him. He had a touchdown last week. The most talented of the Oklahoma receivers, say the coaches. He has both size and strength, and it's 6'3, 6'3 and a half, 208. We're going to show you after the kickoff the move that he made, and Coach Godfrey made him run it back about five times because Very he good. said this is as beautiful a move as you will see this entire season. Ronnie, he had seven catches last year, three for touchdown, so he's a long distance guy. Here's the kick. This one's going to sail into the end zone. Now well, they're going to bring it out. At the 10. Being tackled, gets by at the 15, out to the 20, to the 21, Ramsey Robinson. And here's that replay, Mike. Yeah, here's what Ron was talking about. Watch this route. It's come down in one move and post, and then he breaks it up in a double move, a double post move on Anthony Madison. Watch the post. Now breaks it back up, and then the second move, and he beats him on the second move. And then you said... Uh, Jason White with a perfectly thrown football. We haven't seen anybody have to break stride tonight on their long pass plays. No. It's just right there. So Alabama now down by 10 again. Castile in motion. Sean Williams, big opening over the middle. Has five, has 10, has 15, and counted off at about 18 yards. All of a sudden, the defenses are gone. <laughs> some, been some big plays here offensively. Look at this hole. Adrian could run through that. Sean Williams in the secondary. 18 yards again. He had one of those in the first half. Clock runs. We're about to go under four minutes left to play third quarter. But Johnston in motion. Here comes pressure again. Cody forced him out of the pocket. Going to run it, and he's close to 10 yards. And I'll tell you something, Lance Mitchell with another tackle. Lance, you got to tighten that chin strap. It's, he now has a dozen tackles, and he's lost his headgear three times. <laughs> I think he tightened that chin strap. Good blocking by the offensive line. A little hold there. But, but, but you uh, see Cody forcing him out of the pocket and how many times have we uh, talked about number 80 applying the pressure and forcing the quarterback up and out of the pocket he's out of Ada Oklahoma 6'5 270 and he's just a junior and Tommy Harris not in the ball game run the uh, all-american defensive lineman getting a breather had groin problems last year Triandos Luke had lined up over on the right side and uh, they moved him from the right over to the left. Well, they're now going to put 10 seconds back on the clock and it gives me time to to just mention I still don't see how these Alabama kids are not a little bit confused because Mike the numbering system they flipped it what used to be an even number is now an odd number and vice versa they had learned quick though they had 95 percent of their offense in right now Luke in motion draw play to Williams bounces it outside and Sean Williams close to another first down Teddy Lehman on the stop and Sean Williams is a home run waiting to happen we, we saw him last year as you look at this replay. Breaks outside. Everything gets caught inside. You see Teddy Lehman 
running and making the play. Justin Smiley yeah. with a good block. Justin was uh, very effective on that. Last year at Arkansas, fired up crowd, sold out house, and on very first play of the ball game, they ran the smoke draw, and they smoked Arkansas for about an 80-yard <laughs> run as the safety took off looking for the option play. And you didn't get to talk to him until he tossed the ball back to the referee, and it, that blew that game wide open. He's very capable of the big play, as Mike said. They're going to throw it out of the backfield to him again. Going to be hit and stop Jackson, Asha Jackson, the junior out of Hayward, California. And Tommy uh, Harris has come back into the lineup. Yeah, I'm impressed with Mike Shula and what Dave Rader and Mike Shula has done at halftime because they've come out here in the uh, second half. They've opened up the game plan a little bit. Uh, Shot Williams has been a main factor in this. They've run the ball. They've thrown it to him. 2.59 left third quarter. Pressure. And they get it out to Castile. And Castile is going to be hit by Jackson and also Mitchell. Combining on the stop. Players I gonna, down. I was going to say Jonathan Jackson was coming come pell-mell at uh, Burley Croyle. Tim Castile. Out of Birmingham, who was uh, shaken up. He may have fallen on that football. Jonathan Jackson putting on the pressure. Let's see. Well, he got he got banged in the head, and maybe that was it. Yeah. And Mitchell is right there to bring him down, and it's going to be third down and about three and a half or four yards. And in fact, now some of the Trina came over from uh, from Oklahoma to see if he could lend assistance. And Castile still down at the 35. The situation is going to be third down at about what, Mike? About three and a half yards to pick up the first down. Well, last year when they played in uh, in Norman, one of the things that the Oklahoma people said, the coaching staff, they paid a tremendous compliment to Alabama saying that Alabama was more physical than they really had anticipated, and it took a lot out of them as far as the second half is concerned. But as you can see, uh, up under his own power, Castile, uh, Oklahoma still packing the wall up as both. There. These two ball clubs are going to sleep well tonight. I mean, there have been they some really licks passed on this field. In a very good football game. Castile, two receptions, seven yards. Time is back in. The line to make for the Crimson Tide is the 32. They scrimmage from the 35 and a half. Well, actually, the 35 as they place it right down there. Williams in motion. They want to try to throw it, and the ball was tipped. And Triandos Luke could not hold on. I think they're going to go for this run. Rodney Poole with the cover on the play. I think they're making a statement right here. They're going for it. Drawing a line to sand. Usually Trandus Luke is the steadiest receiver. Well, three wide receivers left, one to the right. Oklahoma creeping that secondary up very close. And Alabama may have just picked up a free play in five yards as Brody Coyle is going to be knocked out of bounds short of the first down by Jonathan Jackson. I think Jonathan Jackson may have jumped offside. He did, yeah. Trying to be a little too quick off the snap, and it appeared that he did enter the neutral zone before the ball was snapped. I'll tell you, the left tackle moved, Ron, for uh, Alabama. Prior to the snap, we have a false start on the offense. That's why it was. It was a left tackle. 
I believe Wesley Britt moved, and that brought him right here. Watch him move right here. Just enough to bring uh, action from the Oklahoma defense. You could just look at him and you say he is a prototype left tackle. 6'8", 312 pounds, a junior out of Coleman, Alabama. They got punt this ball. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's what they're going to do, Mike. And what Bobby Stoops is saying on the other side, it's a let's play punt safe because we want to beware of a fake right here. Seventh punt of the night, and they, in fact, are going to kick it very high, but this one went off the side. I tell you, they might have got foot. Oklahoma with a substitution problem here. Well, this one didn't go very far at all. Not in a hurry. Well, I start to say we got some walkers tonight rather than <laughs> rather than hustlers. <laughs> I think they're talking it over where the flag came. It may have been 12 men on the field, but I think that's what they're talking about whether the other guy got off. So they may eat this flag. Substitution infraction on the defense. Yeah, a lot of confusion on this play for Oklahoma. Mike Schuler using the time wisely to look at uh, his play chart. Well, the crowd with the new line of scrimmage, they put it back at the 35 yard line, and the offense They're trots out on the field. Fourth and four. <laughs> Trying to show confidence in his offensive plan. Last time they punted, they only punted for 13 yards. Might as well. Here comes the pressure off the corner. He is hit as he is thrown, but they caught it. And Sean Williams is very close to the first down. Boy, Brody Croy. Croy took a hit. Pool. He's close. They're going to have to measure this one. Right on the yellow line. What a great performance by Croyle, getting that ball off. They stretch it out, and there's your verdict. Never any doubt with the yellow line. Watch the hit by Poole. Boy, a great job delivering that football. He was hit in the back before he threw the football. That is a big time play. And it's remarkable that he got it to Deshaun Williams, to any of his teammates for that matter. So here we go, first down, eighth play of the Alabama drive. Williams hit behind the line of scrimmage, Tommy Harris got penetration and totally destroyed that play. Well, that's what we've been talking about all night. Tommy Harris, Tom Lemming had him listed as a superstar recruit. Four, six in the 40. You see him miss, redirects there and made the play. Four, four, four point six at 289 pounds. So he can run too with Teddy the layman. Under one minute to play third quarter. Alabama walks it up to the line of scrimmage. They have a second down and 10. Trailing by 10 points. And they flip it out in the flat. 
Williams, look at all the pursuit. One, two, three, four. And there's a fifth jersey coming into the picture as Antonio Perkins is out there. And again, Dan Cody, of course, they wanted to release him, but maybe not quite that quickly, no. Mike. No, but that's, again, a defense that runs to the ball. Ball's in space. Look at all the white shirts. Third long again for Alabama. They need to take it down to around the 21, 21 and a half yard line. Three of 11 on third downs. You see of those Alabama, are the Oklahoma defenders coming up to play bump on the outside. Coyle locks it over the middle and it is intercepted at the five yard line by Dante Nicholson. He came from downtown Tuscaloosa and made that pick off. They baited him into that, Ron, because they felt like they had the uh, corner route to Zach Fletcher, but uh, Dante Nicholson was sitting back there reading this all the way. Look how far he comes, Yeah, Mike. he came a long way to make that play. He was beyond the center of the field and winds up so far inside the hash all the way at the sideline. When they talk about the range of Roy Williams, I believe they're right. So Oklahoma stops the threat by Alabama. But now they have it in their poorest field position of the night at the five-yard line. Twenty-four seconds left in this third quarter. Gain of maybe a couple on the play. Derek Pope, the first man to get there, and that should be the final play of the third quarter. And as we finish three quarters, total offense, Oklahoma 286, and for Alabama, 253. Alabama two turnovers a zero for Oklahoma and that is the end of the third quarter so as we head to period number four the number one team in the nation still with a 10 point lead over Alabama we'll be right back our back and the four fingers high in the air is hey Alabama is being played across the way by the million dollar band colorful night as we said two of the most storied programs in college football and doesn't matter who you're cheering for this this has been a fun venue to be at second down they need about eight and a half yards out in the flat got it complete and uh, that's jones and Jones is going to take it out enough for the first down. Tonight's game track being brought to you by Bridgestone. And in case you have missed the first three quarters of our ball game, Tide finds the end zone. Brody Coyle with a perfect strike right there to Triando's loop. And then those snoop, those <laughs> snoopy, sneaky suitors on a fake punt. Get it out and pick up the first down. And it led the points and then White goes deep. Okay, hey, folks, Oklahoma tonight has 240 yards passing, but they have 89 of those after the catch. Draw play to the 19-yard line. Sledding is tough as Ahmad Childress is uh, one of the first men there. To Adrian Karsten, let's check with you on the sideline. One of the uh, concerns the Alabama coaches had coming into this game was fatigue up front on the defensive line. Childress, 330. Odom at about 280. Bryant, 330. These guys are finally starting to drag. During the break run, they all walked 100 yards down to this end of the field. There really isn't a lot of zip left in them. All the pass rush, all the draws, you got to chase and you got to pass rush over and over again, beginning to take its toll here. You know, Mike, the history has always been those wide receivers and little defensive backs. They get tired, but they can bounce back. Those 300-pound guys, they don't bounce back as quickly. Normally, when they're spent, they're spent. A pass complete to Brandon Jones, shy of the first down. Really impressed with Brandon Jones because when he makes that catch, he turns up field. He's going to get the spurts down. Well, I watch when he gets a catch. Now, he works up the field. He knows he's going to take a hit. But he gets the first down. Now, we haven't seen Mark Clayton for a while. Yes. Travis Wilson now is 6'3", 216-pound sophomore. has been in there most of the time. And uh, he is a very good-looking receiver also. And, of course, Bradley, who was a 6'2", 195-pound youngster. Uh, he has dealt out his damage tonight. Just the change come from all the way across the way. 
Have a lot of depth at wide receiver. First down, Oklahoma. Reese Davis has checked back with you. The Brown Suck will get a good night's sleep tonight when that game's over. Maybe they'll take that website down. Yeah. Fire Ron Zook. <laughs> Straight ahead. That's close to eight yards on the carry. They did that last year after he hadn't been coached one day. I thought that was the dumbest yeah. thing I ever heard of. Yeah, there's a lot of dumb people out there. <laughs> Derek Polk makes the tackle right there, but it is a very good game in that running play on first down. And they're going to need about two and a half to pick up the first down. Right now, OU would love to just burn that clock about seven or eight minutes worth, get down and come up with any points whatsoever, but particularly a touchdown. And Bob Stoops knows that they could hop on the plane and head back to Norman uh, in control and still holding on to the number one spot. It's going to be the draw again. And I think he's going to have the first down around the 37 yard line. Mark Anderson makes the tackle. Mark, a sophomore out of Tulsa. Anytime you see that running back behind the quarterback, you got to be conscious of the draw. See where he's standing right back here. He's behind the quarterback a little bit so he can come over and hit that draw. So we're going to measure again. 12 minutes and 40 seconds left to play in our ball game. So Jones, 16 carries, 52 yards on the night. First down throw, uh, then they've been running to the draw after they get the yardage on first down. See if they come back with a pass here. Sings this one in the flat, and again, it's Brandon Jones, and he's going to be wrestled out of bounds by Charlie Pepra. That's been their play call. Throw on first down, run the draw on second down, pick up the first down. But their offense, those plays are like runs where they're toss sweeping. Quickly to the line of scrimmage as they sprint it out of the huddle, and they're going to get it off in a hurry. This is Jones. Tries to turn the corner, and he's going to be stopped just across the 40 by Derek Pope. Derek Pope, a very active linebacker. Second fastest on the defense. Joe Kine said he's a playmaker. Nine tackles for uh, Pope, as you mentioned his name, Mike. Total offense, rushing yards, 64 rushing yards for Oklahoma. 323 total for the Sooners, 253 for the Crimson Tide. Third down, they need to take it out across the 46-yard line to get the first down. Throws it complete right here in front of us. The tackle is broken and still running is J.D. Ruddles. And how big is that first down right there? They're going to hold on to the football with 10.58 remaining, and it's a gain of 17 as Pope has to make another tackle. Yeah, J.D. Ruddles, when I looked up in high school, he played running back, wide receiver, tight end, and defensive back. But he's a guy when... The Alabama coaches were talking about Oklahoma's offense. They talked about James Moses and J.D. Runnels being a real threat for them. Well, the two things they said about him and the reason they would throw that kind of pass is because he has very sure hands. And they listed him. They just said he's a very smart player. He uh, does not get you beat. Tenth play of the drive. Remember, this thing started back at the five-yard line. Straight ahead with Jones. He gets whacked down hard after a gain of a couple. This time to Miko Ryans. For this drive, there's been three plays. The pass to Brandon Jones, and then the receiver really works up field to get the yardage. And then good solid run by Jones. Kawan Jones, yeah. And then the pass to Runnels. A big three plays for Oklahoma to keep this clock moving. Sooners break the huddle at the 10 minute mark. Now under 10 remaining. They lead by 10. 
pumped it. Going to go on top. Got a guy, and Jones couldn't hold on. He has made so many great catches tonight, and that one he could not bring in. Charles Jones was the man making the defensive play. Jones is all over That's the place. That's everywhere. <laughs> it's family reunion. I hope, I hope they brought a dish. <laughs> Anthony Madison kind of falls down. Charles Jones comes over, but uh, Brandon Jones had about three shots to catch this football. Clayton's in the football game. First time we've seen him in a while. Yeah. See if they go to him. A long time. Number nine, the junior out of Arlington, Texas. He's the inside receiver right over here. White pumps it once, going to throw a screen. Cutting back into the middle is Bradley, and that's going to go for very short yardage. It's going to be fourth down Oklahoma. And let's see. Like they still need about three, three and a half yards for the first down. D'Amico Ryans was there. Yeah, they may go for this. If you got a defense, you're packing a defense on the road. You could do some things. Coaches want him to get out of the huddle. There's eight seconds left on the play clock. Clock, they're going to have to burn a timeout here unless they. They only got one left. Yeah. Thirteenth play of the drive. They get it off in time. Pressure right over the middle, and whoa, what a hit as a flag has come down at the line of scrimmage, and Bradley got his body cut in two by Anthony Madison. When you, when you hurry up like that, sometimes bad things happen. I think he had a bad formation, maybe, on Oklahoma. Substitution. On the offense, decline, first down. So Alabama takes it over on downs and will take a break. 8.49 remaining in our ball game. Oklahoma continues to lead by 10. Center coming up next, Scott Van Pelt and Kevin Frazier, Super Saturday, NFL Blitz, and the bosses bark, Mr. Steinbrenner. Stay tuned for ESPN News Extra, both teams' press conferences. Kenneth Darby. In the ball game at tailback, number 34 for the Crimson Tide. Short drop by Coyle, drills it in the flat and has it complete to his tight end Johnston. And it'll be for a short game. So about a second down at about uh, four and a half for the first down. Pump going to go on top, and he has a man there, and it's just overthrown. His former teammate at Rainbow City, Brandon Greer, the intended receiver. Brody would like to have that attempt over again. Yeah, good pass protection because he had a lot of time to throw this football. Just put it too far beyond Antonio Perkins on the coverage. Safety was not over to help out in time. Thrown exactly where it should have been. That would have been a big gainer for the Crimson Tide. But as it is, incomplete. Stops the clock. 8.08 to play. Out in the flat, back into the boundary, has it complete. And that's Kenneth Darby, and he'll have enough for the first down, plus about five more yards before Lance Mitchell came over to put the stop on him. Good for a gain of nine. Well-designed play to get the ball to running back. Darby against Lance Mitchell. He pick up the first down, move those chains. Alabama still in this football game. Still a lot of time. Need a big play. Johnson, the tight end in motion. 
play action. Coyle under duress now just dumps it off short pass and that one is going to be dropped by Darby. Oklahoma did a good job Ron in the secondary. Played the deep throw real well. Nothing there. Tries to scramble. Find Darby. He's looking upfield and not looking the ball in his hands. Lance Mitchell. <laughs> Seems to have everyone's zip code and uh, <laughs> it's is just around everything that is thrown. Boy, he has been really good tonight. Oklahoma shows blitz. They come up the middle. They go with the draw play, and Darby tripped up. And Reese Davis, let's go back to you and Jack. We'll see LSU a couple of times this year. Uh, Joseph Adai, a converted quarterback from the Houston area. I think Sharpstown, wasn't it? Anyway, he has provided quite a spark for them at tailback. Shot Williams back into the lineup. Offensive line moved again. Yep. Dennis Alexander. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, still third down. I, you know, of all the, the positive things and the negative things that this man will talk to his team about this coming week, if you go back and look in critical third down situations, uh, uh, Alabama, that I can think of three times at least, has had someone moving. Uh, and they picked up a penalty to worsen their situation. Focus. You've got to maintain it, particularly against a club as good as Oklahoma. Coyle under pressure. Going to have to hurry. He dropped the football. The beanbag comes down, but it looks as though he recovered it. Dan Cody was the guy who was coming with the pressure. Well, Cody's been there all day. Quarterback in high school. Dan Cody's a defensive lineman now, and he sh shows you his speed. Brody trying to get that ball released. He just dropped the football. Well, he came down hard on that shoulder. See the, the training staff over talking to him. Freeland to kick. And his best kick of the night, I believe. That spiral's going to turn over. And the catch is made at the 19 as they try to return it. Perkins. Mindley puts an end to the special teams play. 39 on the punt and one on the return. As you look at Coyle, will be time in the history of the Alabama program that uh, the number one team in the country has come here to Tuscaloosa to play. And the Sooners holding up their end of the bargain as far as the number one rating so far. They're up by 10 with 6.07 left to play in our ballgame. Javon Jones right up the middle. And he's going to have about five, almost six yards on that play. Reese Davis, back to you. Ron, just when you think. <laughs> yeah, not so fast on that good night's sleep. Yeah, they, uh, they're not only good at coming from behind, but particularly Quick. at home. Coming up next, Sports Center. That's in uh, five minutes and about 20 seconds from now. Gets by one tackler, then hit at the line of scrimmage. That is a nice job defensively by number eight, Freddie Roach. Key plays in this football game, Ron. I think I point to this fake punt. The throw to Michael Thompson. They picked up a big first down. Then they had Alabama down a little bit, and they came right back and throw the touchdown pass to Brandon Jones. Yeah. And then the interception that uh, Nicholson really sprinted over and made a great play on. Three big plays here in the second half. We'd like to thank that young man. He saves a little extra win from us. But that's coming up in about four minutes, 45 seconds. Third and three. They need to take it to the 30. Swings it out. Jones, and he fell down. Not going to have it. Going to lose a yard. Derek Pope was right there to make sure he didn't go any farther. Derek Pope has had one yeah. great football game. Yeah, he has. He's an active linebacker and has played hard on every play. He is solid. 13 tackles oh. for Derek Pope. And we're going to take a timeout. 427 remaining. Back with the final moments after this. So it's punting time for the Oklahoma Sooners, and we have a new return man back, uh, Sean Williams, back to receive the seventh kick of the night. 
by the Oklahoma Sooners. Blake Ferguson waiting for the snap. <laughs> he came very close to him. They sure did. Williams. 35, and that's as far as he's going to go around the 37 yard line. They'll repunt this because they held Alabama. Yep, sure did. It reached out and grabbed his arm. 40, 43 on the kick and five on the return. They'll bring him back and make him kick again. You got a chance to block it. Got good field position if they turn it down. Mike Shula's going to turn it down. Holding. Holding on the kicking team. Decline. First down. God, it made him re-kick that because they've had so they've been so close all night. Now the fake, obviously. Yeah. But they, but they had a block last week now and, they, uh, and blocked tonight. Thurman Ward would have blocked that if he wouldn't have, Nicholson wouldn't have held it. But they want the ball because of the lack of time. So uh, that's a decision of Mike Shula. Brody Croyle comes back into the lineup after being shaken up on that uh, last series. Four minutes and 17 seconds showing on the clock. You see his numbers. 20 of 34 for 165 yards. And that pass dumped out. Short gain out of the 40 43 Ray Hudson. Teddy Lehman making the tackle for the Sooners. Seven tackles for Lehman. Zings this one complete at the 50. That's enough for the first down to Lance Taylor. And again, Lehman. Go on what Bobby Stoops said the other day. Mike Stoops, really, the defensive coordinator. He said, we didn't play last year where we were hyped. We'll see what kind of statement we make Saturday against Alabama. Believe me, they were hyped this week. Grab with a shoulder pad, and there is Cody again. And now here comes a late flag in. Four times that they have gotten to uh, Croyle tonight. Holding on the offense, decline. Since they got to the quarterback, they'll take the loss. It's all the way back to the 44 yard line. Sports Center coming up next, immediately following our ball game, and our clock is running with three minutes and 25 seconds left. Oklahoma showing blitz, and here they come. Picked up the first one, pass is caught at the 50, and still breaking away is Greer. Brandon Greer with the catch. Dante Nicholson put a stop on him after a gain of 10. I've been impressed with Alabama's uh, entire team tonight, Ron. They played hard defensively. Uh, they're right there as one of the top 10 defensive teams in the country. Got bulk up front, good secondary, good linebackers. They're headed by Pope offensively. Got a strong offensive line. Looks like they don't have a lot of depth at wide receiver. Though. From the shotgun, pressure off the corner, and he just throws this one away. And he was outside the pocket, and the referee got run over. He didn't see uh, this play because he's, you see the official trying to get away. Well, actually, he didn't knock him down. Yeah. He stepped on his foot. Yeah. So that's the reason he went down. That'll be on Sports Center tonight. 
<laughs> and several more nights probably. 3-0-3 <laughs> left in the ball game. Still a 10-point lead for the Sooners. Oklahoma going to take their last time out. So let's take a break and 3-0-3 uh, remaining. Sports Center coming up immediately following our game. We'll be right back. So Don Shula looking on, uh, three minutes and three seconds remaining. I mentioned he had seen his son play when they were at, uh, in, in Birmingham, but he had never, because he was always coaching uh, on the weekends, he never got over here to uh, Tuscaloosa to see him quarterback the Crimson Tide. He doesn't look comfortable up there in that booth either. <laughs> he spent too many years on that sideline winning, what, 347 games. Pressure again, Cody forced him out of the pocket, going to run 40, 35, 30, slides, has the first down, plus a bunch. Jackson and Cody combining them to stop, it's good for 16 yards. Still life in this Alabama football team. Shad Williams stands next to his quarterback. He'll stay in the block. And that one is caught. Now, he was juggling the ball, so it's going to be incomplete. Brandon Greer, the intended receiver. Reese Davis, back to you quickly. Chris Ricks with a big day. 16 to 29, uh, 228. They're back. See the blitz coming. Williams picks up. And they throw the same pass play. And got this one complete. Steps out. Put it around the 23-yard line to Brandon Greer. So it stops the clock, two minutes, 39 seconds remaining. Sports Center coming up immediately following our ball game. Mike Shula has done a good job. He and Dave Rader calling plays against this OU defense. I'll give you a couple of numbers on this OU defense, what they've had to go up against tonight uh, after this play, Mike. Well, they pull those defensive ends, force him up into the pocket, and he's going to run for the first down. And take it down to the 13 yard line. Edwards Fido makes the stop, and they'll say he actually made it to the 12. Deep drop by the linebackers. If he gets by that front four, there's running room for him. They need to punch this ball in. Steps up into the pocket, not going to get away this time. At the 19, the Voracek is there to make the tackle. And uh, Jonathan Jackson is the one who forced him up out of the pocket. Nothing there in the pass routes, Ron. Everything covered. That's five sacks by the Oklahoma defense tonight. A 32 yards lost and two interceptions. Near sideline, and the ball is incomplete. They say it touched the ground. Fletcher has had a lot of close calls tonight, hasn't he? Well, one I know he caught uh, that they didn't give him. Yeah, that one bounced. So total yardage in this ball game: 352 Sooners, 71 of that on the ground. Alabama total 303. They had 108 on the ground. This is the 12th play of the drive. It all started back at the 37. Rolls the pocket. But the end zone, and he just throws this one away. Here's what I'm thinking about now. You take the field goal here because you still need two scores. You got an onside kick anyway. The quarterback just got dinged a little bit on the side. See, he's taking some, some real yeah, pops he's tonight. Hit. He's been a hit. Brian Bostic. This is going to be a 37-yard attempt. Boots at home. 
132 left in the ball game, and it's now a seven-point ball game. I think it's a good call by Mike Shula. Now you got the onside kick. It comes down to this. And on Thursday, we watched him working on this for a long time. Coming up next on ESPN is Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt and Kevin Frazier. Super Saturday, NFL Blitz, and the bosses bark in New York. But stay tuned for ESPN News Extra. Both teams' press conferences here. And Reese Davis is checked with you. You put your baseball bats away too soon. <laughs> we talked about uh, Florida having that big lead, and all of a sudden Miami back. And you mentioned we've been down the Orange Bowl. Hey. They're tough any place, but when they play down there, they can make magic happen. They have for years. Seven-point game, and now we line up. The sure hands team is uh, up between the 45 and the 48-yard line of Oklahoma. One man back deep. Alabama only has one timeout left, so it's essential that they recover this. Otherwise, this game's over. Here comes the onside kick, and it bounds and recovered by Oklahoma. And that's uh, Travis Wilson, one of the wide receivers who was right there to grab it and secure it. So tonight, our player of the game brought to you by Russell Material. It is Jason White of the Oklahoma Sooners. There were a lot of stars for the Sooners tonight that he told us earlier this week. I'm surrounded by great players. I don't have to be a star, but he was really superb tonight, particularly with his long passes. 21 of 35, 259, and two touchdowns. Well, Ronaldo works. Keep it on the ground. Ryan is uh, there. Mike Shula said, uh, got to be proud of his effort of his football team tonight. Short time, he wasn't here during spring practice. Took over this job. He's got a quiet demeanor about him. Uh, I like his confident. Demeanor. Yeah, I do too. Uh, so we'll return to those thoughts. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be right back. So we're back. One minute, 27 seconds showing on the clock. That's all we have left. Hey, what? This crowd never gives up either. No. <laughs> They're still chanting roll tide. <laughs> Oklahoma keeps it on the ground, takes it to around the 42 yard line. Ronaldo works again. Sports Center coming up in about one minute and 16 seconds. Bobby Stoops trying to count the seconds here. Left in this football game. Thought he had a good performance out of his offense. Still question mark on their running game. Defensively, oh, one of the best defenses in the country. Alabama's defense right there, too. Under one minute. 54, now 53. Lehman, see him on the sideline. A little bit of a smile on his face as Ahmad Childress came across and uh, was guilty of the infraction. It stops the clock, 42 ticks left. Look at Oklahoma. They got Fresno State at home, UCLA to go to Iowa State, and then they got Texas. In Dallas, be a big ball game for them. They don't play Kansas State. No. And you know what, Mike? I think that this definitely is in the favor in the favor of the Sooners the placement on the schedule when they play Texas the week prior to that Texas is at home but they have to play K-State and we saw K-State in our first ball game this year and uh, that that's not a picnic by any shape of the imagination this is a team that will very well make a run for the national championship yep. though one of those teams out of the Big 12 will come out Clock runs down to 29, now 28 seconds. They're going to have to run one more play, and this one will go in the record books. And he'll take a knee.
So the Oklahoma Sooners are now 2 and 0 oh on this young season. Mike Shula goes to 1 and 1, loses his first game here at Bryant Denny Stadium. So the final score, Oklahoma 20, Alabama 13, coming up next at Sports Center and ESPN News Post Game Extra. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the internet. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Right now, we say so long from Tuscaloosa, Alabama.